All right, we're recording. Welcome to this new podcast. What is this term? We're going to talk about, hopefully, I, I think like the format could be a mixtape and fights. Yeah, or, I mean, when, just more or less a mashup, you know? Oh. <laughs> like a, a girl talk record. Yeah, like a girl talk record, but not shitty. Or maybe, maybe shitty, so it would be a girl talk record. A girl talk record of our like very niche interests. Um, yeah, exactly. That my friends won't talk to me about, but no, I have a podcast about. Um, so, so I guess yeah, we, could we don't have a name for it. Fun. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't have a name for it. Yeah, maybe it'll come out right now. What do you <laughs> want to discuss? Uh, so, what I was going to say is, well, I think you know what we're going to be doing going forward, right? Is discussing uh, more or less just a rap release of our choosing. Mm-hmm. Um, one maybe perhaps uh, you're more prone to liking than I, or one that I'm more prone to liking than you, which will be demonstrated in our, our next quote unquote episode. And in addition to that, we will be discussing um, more or less just MMA fights. I feel, and uh, perhaps you know we might be moving on to other things, but our common interests when it comes to the fistic arts just happens to be MMA and more specifically uh, the UFC. Yeah, those are big fights. Yeah, we could talk about... Uh, it, it, yeah, if it, if it leads more towards your um, realm, realm, like musically, it just has to be listenable, I feel like. Because um, <laughs> you were saying you were just like scouring SoundCloud to find stuff, which I feel like we could find some bad oh, uh, stuff. Yeah. We, could do, like, we could do like a roundup of the worst shit. Maybe one time. Who knows? Um, it's it's we could. Have you listened? You know to, have you listened to uh, Slim Jesus? Uh, Slim Jesus. I have. I have. Yeah. But I feel like that's like that was a flash in the pan, dude. You know, like that's true. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, he had songs. He didn't have like a tape. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's like uh, I think one of the worst things I'd heard was um, have you heard Global Dan? No. Well, he did like a weird mixtape that was uh, co-signed by Off White, by like that clothing clothing label that's mm-hmm. run by, um, I think it's Virgil Abloh is his name, right? Um, but he had a tape that wasn't so bad. He had like an official tape. That tape wasn't so bad. But he had like a a tape that was him rapping over Joy Division like instrumentals, and that was pretty bad. So I, I mean, um, Childish Gambino, his his whole thing was, I when I was really into him in like 2011, he like rapped over indie songs, and now he's huge, and now he is basically a D'Angelo clone. Yeah, um, yeah, but I can't actually. I wanted to um, start a blog where I, where I reviewed really bad mixtapes, and I had to stop because like the first one I wanted to review was, um. The Gunplay Project by um, Cartier Kitten, Cartier Kitten, Cartier Kitten, um, Cartier Kitten, I think, um, who's like uh, the female member of Brick Squad that Waka Flocka's mom was trying to introduce into the world, or his mm-hmm. aunt. I think his aunt is Deborah Atney. And it like made my brain hurt, like some of these <laughs> songs. Um, and it, like, I, you know, you can find a lot of bad stuff, but I was trying to review this because it, I mean, it is a, on a pretty prominent label and she's associated mm-hmm. with prominent people. So the fact that this was so bad was, you know, maybe like notable. It's not like I'm picking on like someone with five downloads on that piff, but it was still so bad. Like I, I couldn't even like put myself through the listening motion. But today we're going to talk about something that everyone should love, which is Thought Breaker by Chief Keef, right? Frankly, I think it was a release that went unheralded. Frankly, I, know. I mean, I, I heard about it. Well, before it came out, I heard about it through you because you just shared um, Can You Be My Friend? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I like hadn't been listening to Sosa for like a few years. And I was like, what the fuck is this? This is weird. Mm-hmm. Why is he uh, doing a Drake style appropriation of dance hall? Yeah. Let's say and the funny thing is, is like he. I think what he like his rise to prominence came alongside or at least from like a commercial standpoint came with, you know, the finally rich like album 
So I know I think I know a lot of people that more or less knew him through Love Sosa being a being a single essentially and the featuring of his track on the the Kanye West was it Cruel Summer was that like that the project he did that where he remixed mm-hmm. Don't Like and it had like Pusha T and Jada Kiss on it yes and then, yes yeah and then he kind of did a weird like somewhat like Lil Wayne esque run where it seemed like he was doing a lot of drugs and was putting out like a lot of like really good like somewhat not so much lo-fi but like raw raw like really interesting tracks and um there was a track that dropped and i haven't been able to find it on a proper release or a proper official mixtape but it was uh, i remember if i remember correctly it was called wait and it was ba- it basically sounded like he was rapping over an apex twin beat or something of the sort which was super crazy. And then Bye. this year... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, go, go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, but yeah, earlier this year, and I think I, I, I also shared it on Facebook and you, you saw it. It was um, uh, the tra- a track he had done on the Mike Will Made It project earlier this year. It was a track uh, he was on with... I don't know if it was all of Ray Shremmerd, but it might have just been Sway Lee as well where he sang a hook and it was like super cool, super catchy. And I feel like that's always been where one of his strong suits as far, as far, as far as like a lot of his tracks go is just being able to carry a hook real well on top of, you know, just being overall brilliant. I feel like, you know, Chief Keef in some circles is, is like super overrated, but in, in some circles is just like, just not appreciated, you know? I think yeah, overall, I, mean, I feel like he's not appreciated enough. Yeah, I mean, he just... Uh, uh, the stuff after... I mean, I guess he got dropped from the label after Finally Rich. Mm-hmm. And he was making... He he was making... Well, he was making his own beats for a while. But every time I try to listen to him, all his beats sounded like... They were like three beats on top of each other. Do you remember this <laughs> era of Keith? Yeah, yeah. It was like... Yeah. He, he put out like these self-produced mixtapes, which were so weird... And it's kind of, it was kind of like, um, you know, you're talking about the hooks, like he has, he has this ability to make such poppy music, such catchy music. And he was just following his own instincts and not making, not making music that would please anyone to me, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, but then the triumph of Thoughtbreaker just makes me think that, you know, it was all worth it, um, just following his instincts and not caring to make uh, pleasing music. Um, so I, I, I think he produces on this too, but this is all like weird, um, like pop beats and stuff. Yeah, I mean, that, and I think that's what drew it to me initially. I mean, because, and then my fear was when Can You Be My Friend dropped was that, oh, you know, this is probably just going to be like a, a one-off type situation, and mm-hmm. it was just yeah, that, the rest of the record was not going to be as experimental. I guess you mm-hmm. could call that. the The pitchfork, um, the pitchfork review has like some information about how he he dropped a song named Thoughtbreaker, which which isn't that good. Um, and then he came up with the concept of doing like this kind of album with different, you know, like you have the Drinkhead, which is like you know a sad boy rap song, and um, and and just these weird all these all these songs that are you know like uh, whoa um, and grab a star too. They're just like it's absurd that um, Chief Keef would make like these soaring pop songs. You know, what? I figured out like when I was listening to this that like what appeals like I I love I love this album and I love like Lil Uzi Vert uh, XL Tour Life. That kind of stuff is awesome because it just, um, it's like their take on, you know, these like soaring balladeers like, like Sia or, um, the, um, you know, that, that kind of stuff that everyone sounds like Sia. Um, mm-hmm. but it's like them doing it and it just kind of appeals to me because it just, it's similar to when I make up songs, like the lyrics are just as stupid and they're in these forms, um, that have been drilled into my head. But then I'll also like throw in like 
like, baby, can you suck my dick? Like, mm-hmm. like kind of just like throwing a, like a really stupid line. And all my song, all the songs that I make up that I sing are about um, getting my dick sucked and like being better than people. And then, or they're like very sentimental, like just every cliche I can think of in just like a, a cool pop tune. And like this is like kind of like what what these like, um, uh, you know, Chief Keef and uh, Lil Uzi Vert are doing, where it's like, just like these soaring pop ballads, and then also just throwing in like blowjobs into it, <laughs> randomly, which sounds stupid, and then which actually stops it from um, being very. Uh, maybe maybe that's what's holding them back. I don't know because sometimes I've, I I can't play it because like. The really stupid lines, um, like, like in this one, uh, I think it's on Woe. He's like, um, um, you know, I can milk you, right? Moo, 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 moo. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, the rest of the song is so good, but then you come with that. It's like I don't. Uh, I one think thing I can that listen to this by myself. Yeah, one thing that kind of also took, I was taken aback by was the. Uh, subtle interjections of bang bang in specific in, in, in like certain in, instances and i think the more overt like you know is uh example is uh in can you be my friend and uh well it's and it's interesting that you make the comparison to them more or less taking on that you know the 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 ballad because and i mean well at least in little uzi vert's case i would i would discuss with my friends uh how it was almost like a, a their reinterpretation of emo or like scene music, mm-hmm, more or yeah. less just in the style of the the chorus and what have you, and especially Lil Uzi Vert and even more so. And I don't know if you listened to the record, um, and I know a lot of people were just morally opposed to listening to it initially, but the triple the XXX Tentacion record. I like haven't a, listened to it. I'm, I'm like, uh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to listen to it and then fucking like love it. But <laughs> well, well, it was funny because I think like I can't remember what dropped on that day. I think actually that record dropped. The Uzi, the little Uzi record dropped that day, and something else dropped. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking like, wow, this is. This I didn't want. I just wanted to listen to it because I was super curious. But I was more. I think it was more memorable than the other releases that day, just because of the sheer absurdity of the record as a whole. We should do an episode like, that's. Um, uh, we should do an episode on on Kodak and every, pro- every, every problematic record every yeah we should do art. a problematic record roundup where we just uh we give ourselves a holiday to listen to this shit and then we <laughs> could just like talk about it and like you know we're just eh, you know eh, you know we're just doing it for the content um hopefully don't listen to these people or yeah. or just listen to them you know right after this and then just don't become fans or whatever yeah. um but yeah the, the ad libs you were saying yeah they this fucking this record has like bang out ad libs, mm. which is crazy. Which it's cool because it's very nostalgic. I, like I, I didn't get into Chief Keef around Finally Rich. I, I like was listening to Bang One, and Back from the Dead. Mm-hmm. Um. So like, like, like when the, when uh the Three Hundred, um video hit, um what was the first big video. I was just seeing it online, but um. Yeah, it was when I was really into the the Tumblr raposphere, mm. um, and everybody loved Chief Heath. Um, and then and then the then Kanye did that uh, did that remix, and then finally Rich came out, and I was like, whoa, all right, he's here, right? and and now he's kind of back back to like where um, back to the level he was at maybe when when I started following him, but yeah, the the fact that he has this weird like very not like what he's known for album and then he still throws in the chief keef uh trademark ad libs is great and also it's just like he i mean because those albums were great because he would do all this like rapping and throw in like three layers of ad libs and it was just very energetic Mm -hmm. whereas i feel um some of the stuff maybe like after finally rich where he was experimenting and try to find himself it he would just do like a croak 
and just rap forever, basically. Um, and and this is kind of it. I don't know. May, I would I would have to listen to that stuff that I don't like in order to try to bridge the gap. But I I feel like this is a radical departure, but also like going back too. Yeah, I think it's a nice breath breath of fresh air. You know, I think it's it's a nice it's a nice break from a lot of the somewhat like darker, harder, more uh, sinister. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's know, also by Chief Keem. Do you think it's do you think it's also his like California album? Because that could I, be I, it. That could very well be it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's. I yeah, feel like he's... the early stuff was like Chicago, mm-hmm. and then he got rich, and now. I mean, like when I just picture him like riding around in a in a convertible, I I just picture him in L.A. You know, um, that's where he lives now. So maybe like just uh, chilled him out so much that he was able to make this yeah. record. I think all the paintball that he he likes to play is definitely probably play, played a role in him uh, being able to take time away from the aggressive stuff and really focus <laughs> on the matters of the heart. You know, I don't know. He was into paintball. Yeah, there's a there's a one of the newer Chirac videos on Noisy. There's a coverage. Uh, I I can't remember who the reporter is, but yeah, they go paintballing and like he loves it. Yeah, yeah. I guess he can get all the aggression out. He should make a video that's kind of like the old Chief Keef videos where everyone's holding guns, but mm-hmm. like they're just holding paintball guns. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, it's just like a very upbeat song about having fun. And you know what's weird is that this year has kind of been like that. That I feel like a lot of rappers are more or less doing the same thing, and that they're taking radical departures from their their normal sounds. I mean, I think, um, and I think it's even mentioned in the Pitchfork review as well. Um, I think a similar departure would be pieces of Future's Hendrix record, not the Future record, but the Future the Hendrix record after mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And I think that's the, I want to say that's for sure the album with like Incredible on it and Fresh Air. And it's like, you know, and it's, it's, and I think in the sense that was the same way too, because I love, I love Future. Like I love, I'll I'll listen to anything he does, but it was also like a real, like a breath of fresh air, not no pun intended, Mm -hmm. but like. (laughs) Incredible was my favorite track on those, uh, on those two. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. I feel, I feel like people are, taking that departure because maybe it's because rap is so dominant and it's becoming so huge that it's just swallowing up other genres. I I don't know if that'll be possible one day, but maybe, maybe rappers will make every genre of music one day. They'll, they'll go into country, go into like, uh, EDM, We'll get a Nelly and uh, we'll get... What was, who did Nelly partner with? Was it... Uh, Tim McGraw? Tim McGraw. Yeah, maybe we'll get I another ju- I one. Int- I introduced my girlfriend to Accidental Racist the other day. Do you, do <laughs> oh you my God, one? dude. Holy she had, shit. She had never heard it and she we were playing it on her <laughs> phone and she started yelling and she woke up a baby. Like a guy was walking by with her baby and she was like, what? Like after like... I'll forget, I'll forget the... The iron chains, if you for if you forgive the gold chains. Oh, dude! Oh um, man, I I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I know. My buddy sent me the YouTube link while I was at uh, as at work, and I remember like losing my mind, and then having all of my coworkers like look super like concerned. But holy shit, I totally forgot about that. Wow. Yeah. Also, this album when when Chief Keef first came out, I wanted to. Because the, the videos were, were really good. Uh, Dick mm-hmm. Gaines was a director. Um, and my dream, because I think I, w- I kind of want to be a filmmaker at that point. My dream was to become a famous filmmaker within like three years and then make a uh, make a biopic of Chief Keef, but like a, like a romantic biopic. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, oh, do you, do you know Save That? Do you remember that song? It's like... Um, she says she loves me, whatever that is. Da 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 da. Save that shit. Um, which is I ca- kind of a precursor to this album. So mm-hmm. if you like this album, you should look up Save That. I don't know. It was like talking about feelings more than his usual shit. Um, which this does too. This one gives like a lot of agency 
to the women, presumably women. <laughs> um, yeah, 2017. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know. Um, except for the the milk the milk you write moo 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 part. Um, what was your favorite track on here? Honestly, it was. I want to say it was whoa. Just because of the mm-hmm. sheer absurdity of it all. Because it's like complete, it's like crazy auto tune, but like super like ballad, like it's a crazy ballad and it really took me by surprise. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I'll, some of them are, um, they're like kind of trap beats, but he just sings over them. Whereas this <laughs> one is like straight up like, like, uh, like electro. I, I, I'm, I'm very bad with non-rap genres, but <laughs> like you know electro like battle uh ballad type um which was cool what you know i mean i think i think people started like singing on the trap beats and now it's like well we got to go beyond that what what would be your pitchfork rating well i i i feel like a a solid 8.2 yeah. maybe on the fontano scale a, a solid 8 you know did fa- did fantano that's how his, his name's fantano not fontano right it's uh, Anthony Fantano, yeah. Fantano, did he? Uh, did he review Thoughtbreaker? I, I didn't no, know. No, I don't think no. he did. I don't think he he does like weird like he reviews like a lot of rap records, but it's always like super weird, like like really obvious ones and mm-hmm. like ones you wouldn't think that he would. Pay yeah, attention. I mean, he does it by like his what his fans say. So like, mm-hmm. if there's like something that's like super strong within one niche, his fans might bring it up. I feel like people don't know enough about this record in to- in general. No, so, honestly, no, yeah, I really don't. Yeah, think so. maybe people didn't bring it up to him. So yeah, um, let's take a break and then we'll talk about the fights, right? You want to do that? Yeah, yeah we had <laughs> we had a very fun card this past weekend in which we saw one of the mainstays of the UA- UFC light heavyweight and middleweight division crumble. Very oh, you very missed- actually. You missed the. Uh, you missed the Game of Thrones episodes too. Oh, that's what I heard. Yeah, I heard DC. Yeah. Was like, it's fine. Yeah, but yeah, we'll talk, yeah, we can talk about all that after the break. Man. 